Good morning, children. How are you all? I hope all of you are well, fine, safe inside your homes. So today, let us continue with the second part of this chapter that is traders, kings, and pilgrims. So now, in the earlier video, we started about the Muvendar and the Sat, uh, both the Satvas, the Satvahanas, and all of it. Now we will study the story of the Silk Route. So techniques of making silk were first invented in China around seven thousand years ago. All of you know. Silk. We have silk sari, so it's what it's a material. So some people from China who went to the distant lands carried silk with them, and the path they followed was known as the Silk Route. So the path through which some people from China had carried the silk actually it was known as the Silk Route. The best known of the rulers who controlled the Silk Route were the Kushanas, who ruled over the Central Asia and Northwest India around two thousand years ago. so the best known of the rulers who controlled the silk route they were the kushanas you need to remember it they were the kushanas and their two major centers of power were peshawar and mathura the two major centers were peshawar and mathura takshila was also a part of their kingdom i repeat takshila was also a part of their kingdom so also you need to uh, remember this During their rule, a branch of the Silk Route extended from Central Asia down to the sea ports at the mouth of River Indus, from where silk was shipped westward towards the Roman Empire. So, during their rule, a branch of Silk Route was extended from Central Asia to the sea ports at the mouth of River Indus. It was extended from where the silk was shipped towards the Roman Empire. the kushanas were amongst the earlier rulers to the subcontinent to the issue gold chains which were used by traders along the silk route so that was about the story of the silk route now we have the spread of buddhism kanishka the most famous kushana ruler ruled about 1900 years ago he organized a buddhist council for scholars to meet and discuss the important matters so he had arranged some meeting where he could uh, discuss the important matters ashwaghosh who wrote buddha charitra a biography of the buddha lived in his court he and other buddhist scholars now began writing in sanskrit so ashwaghosh who wrote buddha charitra a biography of lord buddha lived in his court and he and other buddhist scholars were they then began started writing that is sanskrit the beginning of bhakti now this is completely different topic so what is bhakti it is the person's devotion to the chosen deity to his or her chosen deity it emphasizes devotion and individual worship of a god or a goddess rather than the performance of the elaborate sacrifices so it will put more emphasis as in more importance on the devotion and the individual worship of a god or the goddess it will not put more emphasis on the performances of the other people's sacrifices so how much you worship your devotion your individuality that is considered in this concept according to this system the deity could be could be thought of as a human being lion tree or any other form it is not necessary only the human being lion tree or any other form bhakti inspired some of the best expressions in art sculpture poetry and architecture apart from it composed devotional poems in the praise of lord shiva about 1400 years ago so now let us have a quick recap firstly we started about the story of silk route the uh, the route through which the silk was carried by the people of china came to be known as the silk route then we started about the store uh, spread of buddhism how buddhism had spreaded during those years and then we started with the beginning of bhakti that is how people uh, worship how people devote their whole time to his or her chosen deity so that was all in it i hope you have understood it well thank you